what's up everybody welcome to another episode of b is for build this is the final episode in our repowering my 30 year old italian yacht series we've lsx swapped the yacht and today we're doing all of the final touches all the final upgrades we're getting it perfectly dialed into how we want to have it for the rest of the summer which at this point is a month and a half and worth noting i think at this point my 30 year old italian yacht is 33 and a half years old but gloss over that quickest recap yet we bought this boat like four years ago we used it a few times took it to the ocean blew an engine got some new engines from our boys over at texas speed we got dual lsx 468 cubic inch lsx's are the biggest one that can be made installed them in the boat powered them with the holly ecu's eventually got it running and got it running well we did a 130 mile boat trip up the columbia river to where we are today and we are in our proper parking spot now so we have a ton of stuff to do. We're, we're rebuilding furniture, refinishing furniture, making new furniture. We're doing upholstery, we're doing mods, we're doing tuning, we're doing everything. And where I wanna go ahead and get started is the fuel. I'm very excited to see how much fuel we've used. So we've got a fuel gauge, we've got a fuel kind of depth finder, and let's just jump into it. I wanna figure out how much fuel did we use on our 130 mile trip back here. Before we get down to work, I want to take a second out to thank our sponsor. Today's episode is sponsored by Shopify. Shopify is an all-in-one commerce platform. It is amazing. Whether you're starting a side hustle or a small business, I remember when the YouTube channel started blowing up, people wanted me to, you know, sell key tags, sell some merch. That's when I started getting on Shopify. That was six and a half or seven years ago now. At that time, I wasn't just a YouTuber. I was also a full-time software engineer. And rather than making my own website, I chose to use Shopify. That should say something. It just makes it super easy to get your business up, get it off the ground, get it fired up quickly. From a coder's perspective, it was amazing because it's got cross-platform compatibility. So your shop looks right, whether it's on your cell or it's on desktop, whether it's on Windows, whether it's on Mac, does it all. On our current store right here, bsforbuild.com, you can see this is a custom theme that I made. Made. I'm pretty proud of it myself and there's just tons of customization and flexibility that can be done with it to suit whatever your business needs. Shopify also makes it really easy to sell in person so if you're doing things like events or if you're doing a Saturday market maybe you can sell not only on your website but also in person very easily all through the same platform. Like I said I've been using Shopify to power our store since the very beginning. Super super cool. I love the platform. I think you will too so whether you're just starting up your new business or you need to streamline an active business I would go check it out guys. There is a link in the description I'll put it on the screen right here too. Get yourself a free trial of Shopify at shopify.com slash B is for build. Huge thanks to Shopify for sponsoring this episode. Let's get down to it. So what Oscar has right there is our old fuel gauge. And we're going to use that as kind of our depth finder to see how much fuel we used. And then we're going to install a brand new Holly infrared fuel level sensor that we will then wire to our screen. So let's crack open this fuel area and uh, stick that tube in there. See how much fuel we burned through. Okay, we got the cap off of the fuel uh, tank. Now our fuel tank has kind of like a hump in the middle and we're on a high spot. So it's gonna be, it is a little difficult to read, but go ahead and send that thing down. We'll get an overall height. The fuel, uh, the fuel gauge was 43 inches. So basically if you ran onto E there, uh, it was 43 inches deep. That thing is going 48 looks like, but this thing is like a three inch, four inch like added area right because it goes down right here you can see the lip of it mm -hmm. so let's say i think the tank is about let's say 43 inches tall for no 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 44 45 let's okay let's call it 45 for science go ahead and pull the tape up and let's see how much gas where we got a gas mark it's definitely wet right here between 20 and okay so let's say we have 20 and a half inches now let's do some quick calculations well, I said quick math, nothing was quick about that math, but I got I got a lot of stuff figured out. The tank is 45 inches tall and it holds 300 gallons of fuel. So we took off with 230 gallons of fuel, which would have left it at 34.5 inches of fuel, which that doesn't matter, that number's irrelevant. But what's more important is that we now have 20 inches of fuel, which is 133 gallons. So we burned just shy of 100 gallons doing the 130 mile trip. So that puts us at we're getting one at our uh, 1550 rpm cruising speed that was like roughly 12.5 miles an hour we were burning one or we were getting uh 1.3 miles per gallon um on our setup which means that with our fuel tank of 300 gallons we have a range of 390 is that right yeah 390 miles pretty good 
Not as good as diesel though. I, I have a uh, an acquaintance that I've been chatting with that has one of these boats that's been retrofitted with newer Yanmar diesels and he is getting um, one mile out of a half of a gallon of diesel. So he can go at his cruising speed, he's getting a whole mile out of a half a gallon of diesel. We're getting 1.3 miles out of a full gallon of diesel. I, I know I worded that backwards, but we're, we're definitely not as efficient as diesels. We knew that was the case. These engines are a lot cheaper. That's why that happened. But overall, that's great. That's a win. We know that our cruising speed was effective. I know how much it costs to you know run this boat around now, and um, it's completely within the acceptable price range. And, uh, and we have lots of range. 390 miles of range is pretty good. So now, let's upgrade this fuel level sender to some new technology. Let me show you what we got here. I had to dive below to get out of the sun here. This right here, this top part, this is the Holly Easy Level uh, Fuel Level Sender. This is a digital fuel level sender that uses LiDAR. You can see the kind of chip thing in the bottom of that. And that's attached to a 3D printed adapter so it'll fit on our engines. Full disclosure, this was plugged in and bolted into our engines the entire time we were underway because uh, we didn't want to risk having any fuel uh, leak out and cause a dangerous situation. So this has been bolted in, but we've never wired it up because to go to our screens, it wants a little resistor and I bought them and I lost them, but I bought some new ones now. And so now we can go ahead and install it. So we're going to bolt this back into our um, fuel tank and then we're going to start running the wires. Well, no, first we got to calibrate it. So this thing's pretty cool. You can uh, calibrate full sweep on the gauges and then you can uh, calibrate the depth of your tank and it'll just use LiDAR to send to your gauges uh, how much fuel you have. So if you have uh, trouble with fuel level senders, definitely check this thing out. It's very reasonably priced from Holly and they sent us a couple of them for builds in the future. So thanks to Holly, I'll put a link in the description. So we're gonna go ahead and wire this now and then um, start calibrating it. Well guys, very happy to say we've got our fuel level sender installed, our gasoline gauge installed and it is reading properly on the dash so we have a 45 inch tank 45 inch tall tank we had 20 inches of gas in there and we set that to be about 48 percent gave ourselves some reserve um, so yeah if you hit zero on this thing you are real close to running out of gas now i will say that the weather has changed it is a totally different time of day it took us six hours to program this thing properly here's my hot tip if you're using that thing with a holly pro dash follow the instructions very very carefully and then if it doesn't work, instead of making it a fuel level 90 gauge type, do a custom ohm gauge type and send it from 10 to 130 ohms and program it that way. If you're in this problem, I'm just saying that for you right now, but it's probably gonna be like gibberish to anybody else watching. But we got that dialed in. So we can now properly gauge our fuel. What's next on the old checklist? Carpet. Let's do some carpet stuff. There's a little bit more electrical stuff to do up here, but I phew, don't wanna do it right now. I'm gonna do some 3D printing first and we'll return to that in this episode. Carpet, so we kind of killed the carpet down here. Working on greasy engines and stuff like that, our footprints kind of ruined this, the steps and then the moldy fridge that Oscar does get to clean has ruined that here right here. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna lift this piece of the carpet out for now. Uh, the bedroom, everything is good. It just needs a quick vacuuming. So we're, we're gonna be trying to replace this piece through here and the pieces on the steps. And we are not carpet guys, so this will be probably hilarious to those of you that are. But first thing we're gonna do is just roll it up and take it out so we can use it as a template. All right, that was pretty easy. Now, the other thing we wanna work on today is furniture. So let's go ahead and head back to the shop. All right, back to the shop, jumping into furniture. So we've got three different pieces of furniture that need to either be replaced or refinished or whatever. So this is our, our bench that had the pads on it. And we were gonna refinish this, but um, some, of these, some of these boards broke out here. So we made the, uh, the decision to replace. Now this is all Ikea furniture that we've kind of customized in our own way. They've made new models that have slight differences. But overall, it's pretty good. And how it's held up is not too bad. This is four years old now, maybe a little bit older, um, but this was out completely in the elements in Astoria, which is really, really hard living. And where the wood stayed stained, it was good. Where the stain went off, that's when the wood started to decline. So it seems like if we keep a good stain on these uh, pieces of furniture, that they'll last a good three to four years and then they probably need to be replaced. It's probably the lifespan. You can see we sanded some wood down and it's like, still pretty cool. So Oscar and I, uh, we've got these three sections that we bought new from Ikea. We're gonna go ahead and assemble them and then figure out how we attached all of these things because however we did it before worked really well. We attached them with magic. Oh, it looks like I see some screw holes right here in the legs. Maybe we use the legs. Well, that worked really well. So we're gonna do that the same way on the new ones.
All right, old bench, new bench. Now this is the wrong color, we're gonna have to stain it. We have got um, some brackets to hit the bottoms together, the pre-drilled holes on the top. It's gonna be a lot easier to walk this thing out to the boat as three separate pieces, so we're gonna assemble it on the boat. For now though, uh, we're good on this, we're gonna stain everything at the end all together. So we're moving on to the next thing, which is our bench top. Bench top is right here, and we used to have slats going this way. We've got some new slat stuff from Ikea as well, just like topping pieces, and we got a new piece of wood to do this. So we're gonna go ahead, slide this over there, start working on it. We're gonna cut out of a fresh piece of plywood a new base for this, which will then get stained, and then we'll install our pieces on top of it. Oscar's got everything all lined out here on the bench. He's gonna cut that piece and then we're gonna be ready to stain. I did some stain tests over here and we found the stain that matches very, very nicely with the original. Uh, so that's the stain that we're gonna be using. Um, while he's doing that, I wanna jump into this table that's working very well as a table. Uh, also needs to be refinished. This was the original from the boat. Uh, Ikea is not selling these right now, they're sold out. So we gotta refinish and restain this one. So I'm just gonna give it a quick sand up, a tighten down, make sure all the bolts are nice and tight and then I'll restain that as well. Look at that, we got our bench seat back. Got some uh, nice finishing screws right here for the heads, furniture, finishing screws, I don't know. They're more expensive, special. And uh, this is our table. Man, the sanding down, var and um, it's not varnish, sorry, staining, uh, really just makes it, brings new life to it, and this came out wonderfully as well. So, we're on a roll, don't wanna stop now, it's time to do a tabletop. Oh, and we're gonna stain these guys. We'll stain these up, and uh, let's show you the table. You've seen it once before. Well, here we are, this is the old tabletop. Man, did the weather did not do great on this thing. So it used to say Lamborghini. This was a Lamborghini box. So some of our Lamborghini parts came in. We're gonna keep this, the size and the shape, but it's gonna say Riva, which is the brand of the boat um, now. So we're gonna do a few things. Um, Oscar's gonna go ahead and cut the shape out around the corners, uh, sand the edges so it's nice and smooth and soft. Um, Chelsea is going to uh, use our vinyl printer to vinyl print the Riva logo and we will stain it and then we will spray paint Revo on it in black before we finish it with something that we've never done before, which is an epoxy kit. I grabbed a quick epoxy resin kit off of Amazon and I'm excited to try it. So our table is gonna have a nice little gloss protection layer because that is like completely out in the elements. So I'm excited about it. Oscar's got the tabletop all prepped up and ready. So this is ready for stain. Chelsea and I were staining all of these guys. So these are all stained to match that guy. Looking good. Happy about how that came out. So we're gonna go ahead and stain this all up and then we're gonna do our Riva vinyl overlay, spray paint it black, and then we're gonna figure out how to do this uh, two-stage epoxying, tabletop epoxy. Small whoopsie daisies. We uh, we accidentally put the holes in the wrong orientation. We're supposed to go this way, and it went this way. This time Oscar just did a job. <laughs> All right, so we're gonna remake one of these. Chelsea and I are working on cutting the vinyl out over there of that, and uh, while that's going on, we're gonna sand up uh, the Riva side logos. Let me show you those. These are the Riva side logos that were on our boat, and we popped them off. They just screw in and screw out, and you can see the paint has faded pretty badly, and it's all discolored, and 
even at its best, it wasn't the same color as the boat. So we went and got a paint match for the side of the boat, the uh, reddish orangish color on the side of the boat. We're gonna sand these down to bare metal, hit them with primer, and then we're gonna go ahead and give them a coat of new paint. Okay guys, it's the next day. We got the uh, Riva logos all sanded up. These are gonna get red coat of paint. Actually, primer first, then a red coat of paint. Coming over to the tabletop, we let the stain dry up overnight. So now we're gonna go ahead and place our Riva logo. We're gonna figure out the orientation and everything so we don't accidentally put it on here upside down. And then uh, we will go ahead and leave the black stuff, mask off the rest of this, spray it so we get a nice black Riva stencil. That'll be good, let the paint dry, and we're gonna figure out this uh, two chemical tabletop epoxy stuff. All right, guys, it's the next day, and this thing looks really, really nice. You can see you can see me in the uh, the reflection. We got a few little wavies here and there when you bounce the light off of it. I think that's well within range for our first try on epoxy tabletop. I'm happy with it. So it's uh, got all the like over drippage stuff right here. We're gonna go ahead and sand all that off, and that should be the tabletop ready. All right, tabletop is ready to rock. We've got a ton of things that we just made. We're ready to take those back to the boat. And more importantly, we got to do a lot of cleaning and upgrading before we put all the new furniture back in. That's kind of like the last step, right? So uh, let's head to the boat, start getting a lot of these things going. All right, back on the boat. We got a bunch of the stuff off. We're ready to start power washing. So we're gonna power wash all this area out. We got like three years of grime and gunk. We've got a lot of rust removal that we got to do. Uh, so up here, power washing is about to start we got our doors back in with our speakers stereo system is fully functioning still which is amazing um oscar for those of you guys that remembered lost a bit of a bet and has to clean the fridge so before we put the new carpeting in oscar is going to go ahead now and clean out this grody grody fridge and we're going to start getting this stuff all finished out sneak peek of the new carpet in the bedroom chelsea put the first piece down and it's pretty nice and while I'm pressure washing, Chelsea's gonna take a shot at cleaning up the uh, the vinyl upholstery. You guys may notice we don't have a bimini. Bimini has been sent off to be remade uh, magically. It's being remade. I haven't heard from them in a while, so I, I hope it's being remade. Anyways, uh, we got some vinyl cleaner. These things were outside for three years, so we're hoping they're gonna clean up nicely. Fingers crossed we don't have to redo those as well. All right, fridge reveal. Oscar did a great job. We've got a clean fridge. Now, new carpet all through here. We're changing the color up a little bit. Chelsea's gonna go ahead and get that all installed.
We've got all our branding and logo pieces all cleaned up. We got the side of the boat nicely cleaned up here for it to be reapplied. So Oscar's gonna go ahead and get these all screwed back in. Well, to this side. Then we gotta flip the boat around to get the other side. So I've been up here for a while, pressure washing and doing different things, and I've really been trying to get rid of rust spots. And we had one there, and we had one there, and then now the bright spots. I tried multiple different chemical rust removers. There's one there, one there, one over by Oscar's feet, and nothing really worked. And I thought, you know, last ditch effort, let's try the wire wheel on the brush, um, because this has this like diamond texture to it. And once we got the wire wheel in there, it cleaned it up better than anything else. So we, <laughs> By working on this for so much, we've kind of screwed up a lot of this. You could see how many weird stains there are. The, the doors, I don't expect there's gonna be as many because we always had them up when we were working. But the problem was, is over the years, we were working, setting things on the side and different things like that, and they stained this bottom surface pretty badly. So I do think that we're gonna have to find a way to clean this that's gonna be more of an abrasive cleaning. I think we're gonna have to build some sort of a massive wire brush tool. All right, night has fallen, I am home in my living room and I want to try and reupholster the steering wheel. I know it's going to be tough. I've never done this before, but that's what Beast for Build is all about. So I've looked at this very, very carefully. It looks like, let me see if I can find a good spot to show you guys. Here's what it is like all together. You've got a stitch on each side of the leather and then you've got what I have to assume is a handmade stitch that links them all together. So when it's kind of busted apart, it looks like that. It's just all the individual little like, it's like a dash, dashed line of stitching. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna pull this uh, white fabric off. We're switching to black. We have a black uh, vinyl leather here, like a, it's imitation leather vinyl. Um, we're gonna switch to black. That's kind of the theme, Bimini's black. This is gonna be black. And uh, so I'm gonna pull this off. I'm gonna attempt to template it out over to there. And then if we get that far, I would like to use a sewing machine to get the dashing in here because it'll do it absolutely perfectly. Use a sewing machine to do that around all the edges. And then if we get all that done, it looks like I would just attach it on each one of these sections here and then just loop it and link it. That's the goal. I'm gonna give it a shot. This is this is outside of my wheelhouse by a long shot, but we've done crazier things. All right, guys, well, I failed on the wheel, and I think it's really important that we show our failures as well as our successes, and uh, let me tell you, it, it came off to a good start. I got the old upholstery off, ironed it flat, made templates, um, sewed up those templates so I had the side stitching, and then you gotta just hook the side stitching to the other side and pull it all in on itself. Got really close. Here's what went wrong. This, uh, this right here is labeled upholstery thread. It's not nearly hardcore enough you could see the difference i don't know why i didn't notice this when i was doing it but if you look at the difference of the the widths of the thread like look at those orange ones versus this they're like two three four times more stout than this um, so the thread was not strong enough the other thing is my sewing machine can only do a pretty tight stitch you can see how tight these stitches are comparative to uh, how long these stitches are and you need a sewing machine that can do a longer stitch uh, because those are the parts that you loop into to hook it to itself so too tight of a stitch meant that it was going to take years to connect them all up i tried skipping a few like skip two and then connect it to the other side and go other side but because i was using the wrong thread um, it was snapping when i would pull it tight it would rip these stitches out of the material so backup plan order steering off amazon we'll see what i get tomorrow the boat it's a new day we've got our hatches and we've got a cleaning solution for the floor boy are you guys gonna love this we're gonna go ahead and get the floor installed 
covering up these pretty engines by engines. So now it's just down to the access hatch. Uh, and then we can clean up our floor. All right, the floor is in. We have so much room for activities and furniture. So you could tell that these are a little bit wider than that. And that is our goal with our new scraping technique that we found yesterday. Now, we thought about the best ways to scrape this thing and we came up with an ingenious solution. Scraper shoes, brought to you by VS for Build. So this is a bunch of stainless steel scrapers attached to some uh, things that we use to install the epoxy on our floors. And uh, basically what we're gonna do is we're gonna get a little bit of chemical compound on here, not too much, some of the on off stuff. And, uh, and then wet it down. And then I'm gonna skate along the grain. You see the diagonal pattern in the, in the floor, along the grain that way and along the grain that way with the hopes of cleaning up this whole floor. We wanna get this stuff to look closer to this stuff. Look at that. Guys, brush skates are the way to clean boats. BS for Bill coming to you with the best inventions. <laughs> oh no. Oh yeah, my shoes are leaving marks. That's just gonna happen. We're not, we, we're not done spraying this thing. Um, Oscar, so now that we got the hatches on, Oscar was curious, like how's it gonna sound? How much quieter uh, is it gonna be? And that's a, that's a valid question. So I'm curious too. I have keys. Oh man, I love these screens. All right, let's see how loud they are. And it, you think we're going to explode the first time we put the hatches on? <laughs> <laughs> Gas detectors say we're good. Uh, I didn't want to start. I was thinking it, but I wasn't going to say it out loud. Wait, the start button's not doing anything. Oh. That engine doesn't want to start. I, I did change some wiring under here. I think I might have wired something a little backwards. Uh, so we'll go for this one. All right. It's so quiet. You can actually hear the exhaust out the back rather than underneath. It sounds like a muscle car. I know, it's got a nice tune to it. Wow, that sounds so nice. Like this is talking volume, Oscar. We could be cruising around with talking volume. Yeah. That's amazing. Way to go, little engine down there. It sounds really good out here too. Cool, man. It'll take That's the, nice. Uh, It'll take the scariness off when we actually rip it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It'll be a lot nicer. So uh, now I'm going to figure out the start button. Um, I'm pretty sure I know what it is. I wired some of the power for the uh, fuel level gauge through there. And eh, I'm just going to go fix it. All right, guys. Well, I'm really bummed to say, but I found out the problem of why oh, that, that engine wouldn't start. This is our solid state relay block, and it, and it runs everything for that right side of that engine between sending power to the dash, fuel pumps, raw water pumps, and the starter signal. Now, each one of these channels has lights, status lights, when they're on and they're off, and for some reason, no matter what I do, it thinks channel four, which was our starter wire, thinks it was on. Let me show you down below here. It's gonna get a little dark. What I've done is to eliminate the problem, unplug everything else, you know, just to test. So you have a ground that it has to have, and it has a positive that it has to have. We're gonna take this below and plug it into a battery. All right, so I've got this thing wired up to the battery, and if you watch the lights for channel four, the second I plug in the, the power, channel four just lights up. All the other ones are off as they should be because channel four has no signal going to it. And uh, so it's it's faulty in some way. We did do some cleaning and that got a little mist and stuff down here, but it's not like we flooded everything. This should be able to deal with a little mist. Um, it could be, I mean, channel four is right next to ground that maybe there's a little water droplet or a little fault in there that connected the ground and the positive. But I overnighted another one of these for 200 bucks. I will play with this back home and see if I can fix it so I can return that one. That's a bummer. All right, guys, it's the next day. We're back on the boat. Overnight parts from not Japan, but uh, Amazon. I did work on the other one last night. I tried a bunch of different stuff to revive it. I hope it didn't just break that. Uh, it couldn't. And I noticed something while I was checking the instructions online. Check this out, hang on. Solid state mounting relay must be mounted in a sturdy, dry location away from extreme heat. The unit should not be immersed or subject to direct spray from a power washer. Now. We didn't direct spray it, but I think we indirectly sprayed it. 
and that's what cooked it. So MSD, we'll split the blame on this one. I'm gonna say your unit is a little weak, should be able to take a little misting, and I should have read the directions. So I think I did a good job wiring this boat. I labeled all the wires. I know where they all should go, I think. Should take about five minutes to get this engine back up and running. Let's give it a try. All right, it's about 10 minutes later, I think, give or take. Fuel pump turns on. Let's make sure the engine turns on and the water is flowing and that's that, that's it. All right, start putting. Sounds good, let's go check the water. And the water's flowing, we're good. $200 later. All right, a few hours of cleaning later and we are really feeling good about moving the furniture in. So we made a run to the shop. We did a little bit of 3D printing, which I'll show you in a second. And we got some of our furniture pieces. You may notice that we got some different carpet too. I'll tell you about that in a second. For now, we're just gonna go ahead and load on a bunch of this furniture and then pressure wash a bunch of our other furniture, get that all cleaned up um, and get that in its place as well. So cool to start seeing the furniture back on board. Oscar's got uh, the hardware. He's gonna go ahead and attach these three little bench units to themselves. Let's talk about carpet. So Chelsea did a great job with this like charcoal colored carpet, this dark, like it's like dark gray, blue colored carpet. Uh, she got the stairs, she got the bedroom, she got this whole area done. And as you can see, we pulled it all off. Let me hit some lights real quick. Uh, you see, we pulled it all out. So the reason we did that, although this was going to be great for hiding dirt and people's footsteps and stuff, the problem that we saw was when you started walking down into here, it made it seem dark and it made this area seem dark. That's one of the, the interior is one of the big selling points for this boat for me. And I liked how it was light and it was light feeling. So we changed the carpet color to white with a little bit of gray. And uh, I think it's gonna match really well. I think it's gonna go really well. So uh, Chelsea's gonna rip up the last of that carpet and start installing the new carpet. All right, guys, it is the next day. It's been really, really hot out lately. So we've been kind of, we're working in the evening. So it will get dark on us again. But uh, rest assured, we're getting through this and getting started on our SEMA build at the same time. Table is not silicone down, not bolted down, but damn, does it look good. Padding for the seats, also just kind of temporary. Chelsea wanted to make some modifications, make it a little bit better than she did the last go round. She wanted to improve on that, which is all about what we're doing right now. And do let me show you an update on the carpet. So out with the charcoal and in with the, I don't know, it's like a light white silver and it looks really, really good. And it did help by lightening up the area a lot. So Chelsea's doing a really good job. Add that to her resume. She's not only a teacher, but she's a pretty good carpenter. So this is on a little bit of a pause until she can return on it tomorrow and finish it all up. Oscar and I are gonna be focusing on getting the rest of the furniture on board, bolted down. And then we've got the final cleanup of like this whole side of the boat all of that side of the chrome windshield and windshield chrome. But to do a lot of that, we need to flip the boat around. First things first though, let's go ahead and get all of our furniture on. That's the bench that goes there. Table, we're gonna go ahead and get it. Um, what's that stuff called Oscar that we're gonna use? Silicone. silicone. We're gonna silicone it down so it doesn't leak water in. We're gonna get it all bolted together. I'm so happy with the way that it turns out and how all the wood is all matching. Oh, and another thing you're gonna see me do is stain this back wood piece. I uh, sanded it up, it was all gray and bad and uh we ran out of stain i, I stained this side and uh, i'm gonna go ahead and stain that side too so a little bit of furniture a little bit of stain and then we'll power on these engines and flip this boat around so we can start fixing up the chrome and doing the uh side logo over by where oscar's feet are
That was so great. So a testament to how well these engines are running and how good everything's going is being able to just kind of like come out of here, flip around and come right back in, no drama, no nothing. It's just so nicely like tuned. The engines are running so well. Just so happy about how everything is, is going on this boat. It's like, fingers crossed. Probably gonna jinx it at this point, but what we're doing here now is cleaning it up like we cleaned up the other side. So we're gonna do the trim work, like all the chrome work. We're gonna be buffing off any of these shoe marks that we've got, cleaning up under the Reba Tropicana logo and getting all that stuff done. Oscar's gonna blaze through that while I jump you guys up into the dash to show you the last rounds of upgrades in there before cleaning. All right, before sun falls on our second to last day here, let's, get, let's jump into this area a little bit. Steering wheel, as you guys saw, bit of a work in progress. Uh, I'll update you on that tomorrow, hopefully with good news. Uh, stereo, here's what we did. We took it to the shop, we 3D, 3D printed a bezel surround and we built a bracket. Oscar made this bracket out of steel. Um, it's already rusting, that's okay, it'll be fine. So that's our new radio. We're gonna go ahead and get this installed and wired in. And then also while I'm under there, I wanna show you guys, well, I wanna wire in two things. I told you guys I put a USB plug here, so this thing screws off and USB right there for people that have maybe a USB device that isn't wireless charging. And then we had a knot meter that went right there. I 3D printed this. Let me show you the process. So what I like to do is I model out the hole that I have, and then I model out the device being the uh, wireless charging little puck. And then I try and figure out kind of the difference and how I want to mount the two together. So I built this intermediary thing, and then I just use a Boolean function. This is 3D Studio Max, and it can kind of carve out the uh, positives and the negatives. And then I send it off to our wonderful little printer. That is a little dirty looking right now. I can wash it off a little bit. It's pretty dang cool. So it's a wireless charger and then it fits in this hole super, super snug. So I'm gonna add a little bit of silicone to that and push it through and it gets wired into the same thing that we have here, which is a, uh, got kind of like a little drop down electrical unit that takes it from the 24 volt system that the boat is and brings it down to the five volts that USB stuff uses. So that's that hole and that hole figured out. And guess what I did for you guys? Ta-da! A compass! You guys said you wanted me to put a compass back on here. So this compass is like 150 bucks. And then when you go a little bit wider, it's a thousand bucks. So I saved myself $850 and 3D printed this guy right here. Similar process, looks awesome. I just gotta go ahead and install it. Well guys, the radio is installed. Um, you see it's installed and it's powered on, but it wasn't powered on for a long time because I accidentally snipped a live wire, blew a fuse, and then we went on a mad scramble until late into the night to figure out where the hell that fuse was. It's because the 12 volt for some reason is not one, not two, not three, not four, but five fuses on it. Five fuses to protect that thing from overpowering. And uh, we finally found the right one and got it back up and running. See you back on the boat bright and early and I'll finish off this other fun stuff. All right guys, back for the last day. It is so cool looking with this thing pulled up front ways. That is an aggressive front end. I love it. One of these days we're gonna build the mat that goes right here. It's like a, a laying relaxing mat and it, you can see we got the snaps right there. So we'll get that done. For now, before the sun gets too bad, I gotta get back in that dash area. Oscar's working on finishing up the polishing and he's gonna get our side logo on here. And I'm gonna jump into, well, I wasn't gonna say the dash, but the first part actually, I'm gonna access through the cabinet underneath here before we put everything back in and clean that area up. So this guy right here takes uh, input from 24 to 12 volts. So this is cool for uh, automotive if you have the desire to use one of these. And I just found it on Amazon. I don't know, maybe look at a DC to DC converter if you're interested. 12 volts, 24 volt input. So the boat runs on 24. We'll go ahead and put that there. And then it runs to two um, female USB. And then I can just go ahead and uh, run our devices up there, which is a another female USB. So I have a male to male USB plug. And then the other one just runs off of its standard USB. And that'll power those two things. 
All right, got the wiring side of things wrapped up. So we got that charging a GoPro right now, which we desperately need to do. And if we look here, ding, phone is charging. That is super, super cool. Wireless charging on a 30 year old yacht. It's pretty nice. I'm gonna go ahead and do the siliconing on this guy. And then I gotta throw some bolts through our adapter and then silicone this thing on there as well. So we got our compass finished. All right, that's the wireless charger and the compass installed. Now you keen observers will notice that we don't have a steering wheel. And yep, that's a problem. Here's what I've got. We're gonna make one of these things work. We got the old one with half done wrappings. And then we've got this guy. I kind of like the bright red, like it's almost a Tropicana red centerpiece. Let's see what we can do. All right, guys, update time. We got the whole outside of the boat clean. We're getting our cushions on. We made some mods to the cushions so they fit a little bit better. We're getting our cushions on. Um, and uh, we got the steering wheel. We did <laughs> some quick and dirty improvements. This is bat handle grip. Uh, it's nice, it's cloth. It doesn't doesn't uh, heat up too badly. And I just threw that on there for the time being until I can get that thing professionally reupholstered. Or I decided to just give it a shot again with better thread. Big fail, whatever. Chelsea got the carpet completely done. It looks amazing down here. We're in the process of cleaning up, but it is, I love this uh, lighter color of carpet. It really lightens the room up. Great job, Chelsea. So we're getting that all cleaned up and I'm gonna add one more safety device. So we have our gas detectors and we have a fire extinguishing system within the boat, but these things are really, really cool. The owner of this company reached out to me. I think it's pronounced Elide, Elide Fire. These are balls, as you can see. <laughs> and you put them in areas and then if fire reaches them they explode and and release fire extinguishing chemicals it's pretty cool it's like a it's like an anti-fire bomb anti-fireballs so i'm going to go ahead and get these there's an orientation going to get them right side up and i'm going to get one next to each engine down below just be another line of safety all right guys the boat is finally clean for the first time well <laughs> a little bit of dirt back on the crowd. I don't know where it keeps coming from, but this is the layout. This is the goal that we've been going back after. I'm so excited that we got it. We got it there. Downstairs looks phenomenal. Let's uh, let's go for a little trip on the river, shall we? This is a big change in sound. Oscar and I can just easily talk with each other. The exhaust is working so much better. Well, it's not the exhaust is working better, sorry. It's that now we have the hatches down, obviously. It's quite amazing. This is, this is relaxing now. Yeah, it's so much less frightening. <laughs> this is great. Oh, there's a giant log in the water. That's the stuff that frightens me. This river is a little dirty, a little debriefful. A lot of people out on it today. It's a really hot day. I'm sure we mentioned that once or twice. Nice water stain right there. Let's see if we can get somewhere to open it up. All right, 20 miles an hour. This is as fast as we ever went on the last one. And we got people in front of us. I'm gonna slow it down. We're gonna go the other way. Okay, so this is as fast as we ever went with the old motors, uh, it's a little faster, 21 miles an hour. Here we go. It's 25. Try and hit the, uh, get us up on plane a little bit. There we go. And we're on 
Champlain. 28 fucking people. Ah, uh, and I got to let out of it. It's nice that it's a busy day on the river, but it's also not not helping us. Yeah. Time to put the hammer down. We've got to go pick up our friends for our, we're having a dinner uh, get together on the boat. Engineering Explained is on his way. We got to go meet everybody. I've got the trim tabs adjusted. We don't really have too many people in the water. Let's give this a shot here. We do have wake, but that'll be fine. That's 20, 23, gonna put the trim tabs down. Hopefully our front end will go down a little bit more. 24, I think it did it a little bit. All right, I'm gonna give it full throttle. That's intense. Wide open at 27, 28 miles an hour. That's that's about all we're getting. Damn. And we just went through a hundred gallons of fuel. <laughs> and that was our speed test. <laughs> 50 bucks worth of fuel. All right, so it looks like uh, it looks like guys, we max out at 28 miles per hour. That is. Not super impressive, but that's also not what this boat is meant to do. It's not it's not fuel efficient. It's not really what I want to do. Um, it makes me nervous. I'm cool with going like this. This is good. This is nice. This is 12 miles an hour. Um, I really thought the engines would give us a lot more, but we are no power adder and we are on marine gas. So I have to be kind of conservative. 28 ain't bad. We definitely, our, uh, our top speed with our last engines was 20 miles an hour. So 28 ain't bad. Yeah. Well, it's Judging by the speed of our friends over here, we could do wake surfing. <laughs> All right, guys, it's actually two days later, I'm back on the boat, hanging out. So about our top speed or top speed, here's the thing I'm thinking. We are pushing a lot of water there and uh, these trim tabs are just a little sketchy. They worked perfectly fine on dry land and then we couldn't really get them to fully function like we wanted to when we were in the marina testing them out. It was really weird. I don't know if maybe just one of the plungers is a little stuck or something. I, I mean, like math wise, there's a lot more in it. Also, I was being a little bit of a wuss and I will explain why. Most of it is I'm pretty new to boats and I was worried about doing something stupid and careless so i've got a close friend chris fix who also has the channel chris fish and he's been on boats his entire life and the next time he's around next time he's in town might be next month i'm not really sure i'm gonna have him out on the boat and have him help me dial in the top speed he, he uh, his dad has a boat that's super similar to the size and it uses gas engines as well so chris if you're watching i want you to help me push this thing to the limit oh, i forgot to tell you guys one really funny thing that happened so the reason I'm worried about making amateur mistakes is because I made one last night too. We got this swim deck right here and then uh, we used the, uh, the the shoreline or the big hardcore rope thing to uh, to hold it, make sure it didn't go too far away from the boat. Then we started cruising around at night. We went back into the marina. You got to do a lot of forwards and backwards, forwards and backwards to navigate through the marina. All of a sudden, one of the engines just kept stalling out like crazy. Stalled out, turn it back on, put it in a gear, it would stall out. It's like, what the hell is going on? The rope was tied around the prop. We accidentally left it in the water absolute amateur mistake but those are the types of mistakes that you make when you're learning about boating and i didn't want to make one of those while using 1500 horsepower and a follow-up from two nights ago we had 13 guests on the boat after that like top speed run we had 13 guests on the boat it went magnificently we all had a great time everybody went swimming and we had dinner and drove up and down the river and then once it got dark we flipped all our lights on and we did like a night cruise up and down the river and and our radio works, that's the Coast Guard. 
I mean, we had a great time and, and all of that was going really slow. I mean, that's kind of the MO for this boat. There's no reason really to go really fast. We want to have like a lot of people on here. People enjoy sitting on the front, which means you have to go slower. And uh, this boat's not about top speed. If it was about top speed, I would have got one that doesn't have an apartment down below. So it's just, you know, a cruiser, a chill cruising boat. And it does that magnificently. I'm so happy with the volume of the engines. It's so quiet. We can all just talk at normal talking volume and cruise up and down the river. And it was a really, really great night and we're back out here today the weather's not as good as it was two days ago but it's good enough but really in conclusion just getting me and 12 of my close friends out here on the boat to have a dinner party to just have a great night out here that's the big win that's the big payoff and that is the success in my book like this is exactly what i was looking for it's the boat to do everything it used to do and be able to cruise around up and down our river and have a good time and it did that flawlessly so big win I want to say, I want to give a shout out to everybody out there in Astoria that was so kind to us for all those years that we are out there. The idea that nobody screwed with our stuff or stole our furniture or did anything nasty or mean or anything for three years, that's kind of unheard of in YouTube world. Everybody was so just awesome. And uh, we'll see you guys back there when we do our next round of updates on this boat next spring. But thank you to everybody out there at Astoria Mooring Basin and just the people of Astoria. You guys were all great. In a city that's on fire like every other hour, we appreciate that. And a huge thanks to our sponsors that helped us out so much. Texas Speed, Holly, Deechworks. We appreciate the hell out of you guys for helping us get this boat back on the water. That is the finale of this boat project. Until next spring when we come back for a round of updates. And now I got to go build a SEMA car. I've got... 40 days. Thanks for watching. Make sure you subscribe so you don't miss our semen build. See you on the next one. Peace. Come, come on.